Thank you. Okay, so what is going on? Over the past few weeks, I've spent a lot of time working on custom Super Mario Bros. Wonder levels using the Fushigi level editor. And whilst doing that, I realized that some of the stuff that Super Mario Bros. Wonder allows you to place inside of levels is extremely weird. Obviously, you can place any object that shows up in a level in the original game, but it goes way beyond that. You can actually put just about anything that's present in the game's files into a level. For example, this here is the model the game uses for the face of Mario when he's transformed into a Wubba, which the game for some reason allows us to spawn separately. Or, uh, well, I think this speaks for itself, I just placed the World 1 map as an object inside of a level. So long as you know what you're looking for, there are no limits. Okay, but what does that have to do with the double cherry? What peculiar objects are we spawning to accomplish this? Well, here's the thing, players are objects as well. So recently I discovered that it's very easy to place multiple player objects into a level, and this results in these clones which you can control. It's just like Super Mario 3D World's Double Cherry. In fact, apparently the Double Cherry was implemented into Super Mario 3D World after its developers accidentally placed a second controllable player object into a level themselves. However, this Wonder version of the ability isn't quite identical. For example, Super Mario Bros. Wonder's lack of player collision also applies to these clones. So instead of them being able to bounce on top of each other, it's actually quite easy for them to bunch up and form this slightly cursed looking group of merged duplicates. For the most part, you can think of these player clones as if you're playing in multiplayer mode, but you're controlling every player at the same time. So just like in the original game's multiplayer mode, the camera will only ever track a single player. In this case, it's always the original player as opposed to the clones. There's also other quirks, like how the clones can each take damage individually, but when they collect a power-up, only the original player will actually transform. If you enter a pipe, everyone will just die. That's probably because the clones get left behind and then they're off-screen, which kills them, and if any single clone dies, the original player will die as well. Also, when you do die and then respawn in the level, you'll probably die a second time because your clones are still in their original position off-screen somewhere, which means they die, and which in turn causes you to die again. It's a bit of a mess. By the way, you can only spawn 4 players at once. The game will crash if you try to load 5 or more. I suppose there's no reason for the game to actually function with more than 4 players loaded since that's the limit in local multiplayer. Also, each character actually has their own player object. So if I want Peach to have several clones, I have to specifically place Peach player objects in the level. That also means we can mix and match different characters as clones at the same time. Another surprising aspect of these clones is that they basically fully work during most wonder effects. Only the main player will actually get warped to the wonder flower, but the effects still apply to all the players. In fact, so far I've just spawned in the default player object, but of course there are objects for each wonder transformation as well. So if I place several of those in a normal level instead, there we go, we can use this double cherry effect on top of any wonder transformation. And the coolest thing about that is that, just like with the different types of characters, we can use multiple types of transformations at the same time, or even normal players and transformations. It's kinda crazy. The most fascinating thing about this is that now the controls and movement of the different clones aren't synchronized. So you have to put a lot of thought into the different control styles of each transformation all at the same time. Doing this also demonstrates this weird glitch where some of the transformations will use Mario's colors even though they are a different player. Anyways, I suppose I haven't actually explained how I made those double cherries at the start work. I swapped the original game's mushroom model with the double cherry, then placed some mushrooms in the level, and then I made those mushrooms send out a signal when they were consumed that would spawn one of the player objects. It's definitely not a seamless trick, all of this is basically just a proof of concept because, well, I don't think any of this clone stuff can truly be used in a serious mod. There are just too many problems, like I haven't even talked about all the complications that you'd have to deal with to get any of this stuff to properly work in multiplayer. When it comes down to it, this is just a very elaborate and interesting bug, but I can't really think of any ways of making this work for a real level. 
Like, when I first discovered this, I thought maybe I could make a level where the clones are separated the entire time, which would avoid some problems, and then they still get to help each other out by hitting switches or stuff like that, which would be kind of like that one Captain Toad level. But even that couldn't really work, because remember, going through pipes or other types of screen transitions still kills the clones, and something else that I haven't mentioned yet is that flagpoles also don't work with clones like at all. So, as interesting as all of this is, I can't really think of any practical uses for it. But anyways guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed all of this crazy stuff, maybe consider leaving a like, or subscribing, or stuff like that. In case you're interested in messing around with Super Mario Bros. Wonder Modding yourself, be sure to check out the Wonderland Discord server linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, see you later, and bye bye